You asked me about uh, when I was traded from the Yankees uh, to Kansas City, which was the last team I played for. And uh, I came off a very good year with the Yankees in 1973, and I pitched more innings than I'd ever pitched in relief in my whole career. And, and uh, so I was wanting to move uh, my family to, uh, with me uh, and I couldn't afford to unless I was guaranteed, you know, like a two-year contract. I wanted a two-year contract for, from the Yankees uh, so I could be more with my family. And, uh, and uh, the Yankees uh, did not want to give me a two-year contract. They, uh, that was just unheard of at, at that time. And so I made up my mind that if I could not get that, uh, and be able to move my family, then I wanted to uh, uh, be traded uh, or I would uh, just retire, you know. And uh, and so uh, they didn't want to give me a two-year contract, Steinbrenner, uh, with, uh, with uh, the Yankees. And so I gave them some options of, uh, because I controlled the trade because I had enough seniority uh, in, in baseball that they couldn't trade me without my permission. And so I gave them uh, several cities uh, that I wouldn't mind being traded to because I wanted to build a house and, and buy a house and, and have my family with me so I wasn't gone so much uh, from my family. And it's a big stress in baseball. Uh, you're gone so much from your family. And, uh, and so this was my thinking at the time, and so uh, the team that became interested in me was the Kansas City Royals, and I wanted to talk to the general manager to, to make sure that I was in a good situation, uh, and they would use me, and uh, and I wouldn't just uh, be there. And uh, so I saw, talked to Cedric Tallis, and he assured me, yeah, we'll, we'll use you, we want you, and everything. Well, as it turned out, uh, after I got traded there, uh, I, I was traded for Lou Pinello, uh, Lou Pinella, which was uh, a, a, one of the favorite players of, in Kansas City. And it wasn't a very popular trade to trade me for Lou Pinello in the first place. and. The Kansas City fans didn't know what I was doing in New York. You know, they were not, uh, they were into their own players. And and so, uh, and then uh, I found out that uh, Cedric Tallis was a good friend to Lou Pinello, and they both went to the Yankees. So, so now I'm in Kansas City, and, uh, and what I was told was not true. And the manager, uh, uh, Jack McKeon, uh, you know, uh, was did not like Lou Pinello, and they and, and they were crossways, and he wanted to get rid of him, and uh, so uh, it didn't matter how he did it. And so when I got to uh, Kansas City, uh, they were not about to use me the way I'd been used before, and with a lot of work and staying sharp. Uh, with with work, they use, they pitch me about once a week and once every two weeks, and uh, and it was bad. Uh, it's bad for my career, and um, I I went and talked talked to the manager, and and uh, it it was just like talking to a wall, you know. It, it, I was getting nowhere uh, with with him, and uh, and and so it was kind of an unpleasant experience that I had uh, with the Royals. Uh, at the last two years of my career. So in being traded to the Royals, I thought the, the Yankees threw me a big curveball, you know, and uh, it was interesting because uh, the first time the Yankees came to Royal Stadium after I was traded, uh, the sports writers in New York were uh, talking about, why don't you use Lindy? Why aren't you using Lindy? Because I'd, I'd been a favorite, you know, in, in New York, and, uh, and they knew I wasn't being used. And uh, it was just uh, one of those crazy things. And I remember the uh, first time the Yankees uh, went to New York, I mean, the, the, the Royals went to New York, and Actually, they were renovating Yankee Stadium, so we had to play in, in uh, Shea Stadium, 
where the Mets were normally playing. And, uh, and so uh, the first game uh, we played there, uh, they brought me in about the sixth inning, and, uh, and George Brad came over to me, and he says, Lindy, they're giving you a standing ovation. <laughs> and I said, what? Because I was being booed in Kansas City because they traded me for their favorite player, you know, and so uh, I wasn't used to being treated very, very well. And, uh, and uh, the, the Yankee fans that were there that day gave me a standing ovation because of what I'd done uh, for the Yankees. And so I, I thought that was kind of neat for them to do that. And so uh, I did finish my career with the Royals, and uh, it was not that pleasant uh, for me because I wasn't pitched uh, well. And uh, and I think I, I just uh, retired uh, probably before I should have because I was just kind of tired of the politics that was going on in the game, and uh, I just wanted out at that point. And, uh, and so... Uh, so I retired, and some of the players were very surprised that I was retiring uh, because they didn't think that I should retire. And uh, and probably if I'd have stayed on, like with the Cardinals, I mean, the Cardinals wanted me also at that time. Uh, you know, I could have possibly uh, broke uh, several records. One was all appearance, all lifetime appearances uh, record, and also. Uh, the wins and relief record, which I was very close to, to that record anyway, and so uh, I could have ended up that way. But but I think at that point in time I was just thinking uh, uh, of my family and and I need to to make a transition out of baseball, and uh, and and I wish it it could have been uh, better that that I could have played as long as, as I was really uh, capable and able to uh, perform, but it didn't quite work out that way. I actually uh, announced my retirement before the season was over in, in 1975, and, uh, and so it was kind of interesting that uh, after I announced my retirement, I was used in uh, all kinds of games toward the end of the season. I was, I was in four or five games in a row and uh, didn't give up another run or anything <laughs> till uh, the end of the season. And, uh, and they had a nice ceremony for me in Royal Stadium and my family was there and, uh, and Harmon Kellebrew, who has traded to, to, the, to the team from Minnesota, of course he made all his fame in Minnesota. He was the MC of that program. I had a lot of respect for him, for Harmon Kellebrew. And uh, and so it was a real neat day. They didn't give me a car or anything. They gave me a ring, or they gave me a watch, I think, that uh, was all magnetic and looked like it was gonna take off to the moon or something. I don't know. It was <laughs> one of these real fancy watches. And uh, so uh, my family was there, and I remember that uh, Kathy, my daughter, uh, was the one, she really cried because I was retiring, because she was used to going with me to the ballpark, uh, every, especially the summertime when school was out, and uh, we would go early, and then the family would come later, and she got to meet all the usherettes and all, all the, uh, the people there at the ballpark, and got to be friends and so there was kind of a pattern with her life and and so she really enjoyed that and she was going to miss that a lot you know uh, my being retired and uh, but uh, it was uh, there's a lot of good things about the Royals I mean I, I'm not trying to put down the Royals uh, it, it, it's just not good for my career I did want to mention that I did have some good highlights with uh, Kansas City when I was with them, and they started me a game against Oakland uh, in Oakland, which was the biggest rivalry uh, for the Kansas City team. And I pitched a one-hitter and uh, and should have probably had a no-hitter. There's one uh, infield hit, uh, a guy beat, beat out a, a throw. And uh, so it was almost a no-hitter that I pitched. And I did have some highlights, and, and uh, the Royals did treat me well, uh, and so I, I'm not complaining about that. It was just uh, the whole thing about uh, 
how you're used. You know, as as a as a relief pitcher, you're totally dependent upon the manager and his his confidence in you. And when he brings you into the ball game, the situation and and that type of thing. And uh, and it, it, if he's made up his mind that this is going to be uh, uh, my uh, a top relief pitcher then he's going to use you in a certain way and they they did not do that you know and uh, in any way that was good for my for career and my production so that was a disappointment but uh, uh, they gave me a uh, good good press at the end when I retired in uh, this little ceremony that I talked about before and uh, and then the press release of my retirement Retirement was done by Dean Vogelar, who was head of the uh, the press, uh, the publicity department in Kansas City, and uh, and and it's kind of interesting that Kansas City was where Rush Limbaugh started out <laughs> years ago, as most people know him of of fame. Of course, I didn't know him at that time, and uh, but. Uh, but Dean Vogelar put out uh, this release of, of, of my career and uh, this press release, and it was four pages, and it was really well done and uh, documented my entire career and made thousands and thousands of copies, and he gave me all kinds of copies of that. And, and so, and the Royals have always been good to me in getting tickets. Uh, I could get any, whatever ticket I wanted in Kansas City when I was there, so... And we lived there for a number of years uh, after I retired. So, uh, so I, I'm not I'm not saying sour grapes, you know. Uh, if 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 I was more mature at the time and realized what can happen to you in baseball, uh, I I would have been much more insistent as to where I went and the conditions. But. Uh, even so, I would not know that I wasn't talking to people that were going to to affect my pitching in Kansas City. I was talking to people that were going to go to the Yankees and would have nothing to do with the situation. So so I, I, I learned, I guess, a valuable lesson as we learn uh, through life and how to deal with people. So.